Welcome to a, another mission on our journey to mastering project management. In this specific mission, we're going to focus on the feasibility stage, which is the second stage on the project life cycle. Once again, we revisit the same standard model to just highlight where does the feasibility stage fit in this life cycle. As you notice, the feasibility stage start after the approval of gate one and conclude with project authorization at gate two. We'll touch on this in this mission. Once again, I'm going to ask you to pause the videos and <clears throat> take some notes. And here we're going to ask you the following, because sometimes we do have often people question, why do we need a feasibility study? So do you think we need a feasibility study? Yes or no? And why? So please pause the video and write down your answers. And when you're ready, come back here. Welcome back. The second question is we want you to explore is uh, what are or what is the difference between a business case and a feasibility study? These two terms are often used interchangeably and uh, nothing wrong with that. However, I am, as you will probably notice as you work with me, I'm very particular about the word we use and what each of them psychologically mean to us. Personally, I think of a business case as X. I'll explain that later. So now you need to tell me what do you think is a business case and what do you think is a feasibility study. Of course, you can say they're the same or you can say they're different, but explain. So please pause and uh, enjoy the exercise. Here we go again. So what is a feasibility study? Quickly or in short, I like to always look at the feasibility study as the first risk management exercise. Well, I need to explain this a little bit more than what just this box shows. Usually organization initiate or start a project because of some kind of stimulus or a trigger. The trigger could come from the strategic plan or from the team as we discussed before. However, usually projects are initiated or started to respond either to a threat, maybe competition, maybe some laws or regulation or safety. So there could be a threat to the organization and the project would help alleviate or mitigate that, that threat. Or the project could be triggered by the organization to capture a new market or enter a new market or increase market presence or provide service to the community if you are an NGO or government organization. So there is an opportunity. And as we defined in... Uh, previous quest is that we look at risk as threats and opportunities. So risk are any uncertain event that could impact the project negatively, which means they would be threat or positively. In that case, we consider them as opportunities. We know this is many people accept this and many other many people do not accept this argument of viewing risk as a threat and opportunity. Up to you. If you think risk are only threats, fine then basically we need to look at the threats or the risks and the opportunity in that case. Okay, so back to feasibility study. What does it mean? Obviously, as we mentioned, a project is usually triggered or started in response to a threat or an opportunity. So one of the risk management techniques we've learned is to assess that risk. And we do so 
for the project via a feasibility study to determine to determine if this is something we would like to pursue which means we see the opposite the positive and the opportunities outweigh the threats and the negative aspect so if we believe that then we would exploit that opportunity and go ahead with the project on the other hand if we feel that the threats are much higher than the opportunities then it might be wise to stop the project so basically this is why we consider the feasibility study as the first risk management exercise on the project which is as the conclusion of the study we have to determine if we go or don't go now i did not explain what the business case and i know i've done it in the previous quest but let's repeat it here to me a business case is simply the following is there a case a need a justification for a project and if you remember that is actually was part of the project brief what is the need for the project now i think it's important to realize that having a need for something that doesn't mean it's feasible yeah you might be interested in going on vacation around the world and that will be a wonderful vacation and i'm sure you can have a great time however yeah that might not be feasible maybe for many reason maybe no time maybe no money whatever the case might be so i always like to separate the concept of business case which is the need or justification for a project and in this case the word business it could be it could be community need it could be uh, from a government perspective or an NGO, there is a case, there is a justification for the project, but might not be feasible, which means we might not be able to do the project. Therefore, we always look at the business case as part of the concept stage and the feasibility study as a separate exercise to determine if the project is a feasible. How do we do that? How do we determine if the project is feasible? and maybe i should explain that quickly um let's look at the left before we look at the right so as we mentioned in a way the core purpose of a feasibility study or the assessment of these various factors that you're going to see on the right and we're going to be explaining them shortly the core purpose of this assessment is to help us determine the following if we can complete the project and deliver the results successfully that's the main purpose of a feasibility study we need to analyze these multiple factor to determine that uh, uh, the answer to that question if we believe we can complete the project and deliver the result and realize benefit that we expect when we launch the project then we can say the project is feasible if we have any doubt, then potentially this project might be at very high threat and should be reconsidered and maybe even stopped. Now, what are all these factors? Let's see them one by one. Now, of course, these are common. In some projects, some of them might not be applicable. In some project, maybe not everything is here. So uh, you cannot use these things rigidly. Uh, we think we've covered most of the important item, but keep your mind uh, open to look out of the box in case there are anything that we must have missed it because of a special need on a project that you're working on. So as we continue the feasibility study, let's go one by one. The first box was about what we call internal cross evaluation. What is this? maybe in small organization this will not be even a consideration however on large companies large organization large government ministries and others it is likely that more than one department or division or branch could be working on the same type of project which means it could be resulting in wasted effort because of multiple people doing the same thing so one of the things we need to figure out and we think this should be the first step is that is there any other division or branch 
our department working on a similar project? And if, if the answer is no, great, we can continue. If the answer is yes, then we need to figure out a way what to do. Maybe cancel one or maybe synergize and combine our effort and energy. So this is a very simple exercise, um, just verifying that nothing else compete with this project. The other consideration here is what we call the human resource consideration. And please be careful here. A lot of people always confuse this. We are not asking you to start naming people and you know coming up with an organization chart or forming a team here. All we want to know strategically at the highest level possible is do you think you and your organization have the necessary resources, people, resources, uh, and what we mean here by you have the necessary resources, we mean in terms of availability and capabilities to deliver the project. Now, if you have them, great. If you don't have them, or maybe you have the people who have the right experience, but they're not available, then what do you do? Is it a major issue that where it forced you to stop the project? Or it is something maybe you can supplement with outsourcing? So that's the only thing we're looking for here. Don't start coming up with organization chart and project team. There will be time for that. And this is not the time. Now, in some situation, especially if you are working with an NGO or government organization, some project might be launched because there is a community need or there is a social need. And in this case, even in those situations, we still believe that a feasibility study is necessary. And then we need to determine what is the need. Technically, our first book, The Inheritance, was a story about building a community center. And if you have a chance to go read that book, and the idea was is that before, even though it's a community center and a nonprofit project, we still have to evaluate to make sure that the community need such a community center. And don't just assume things and take things for granted. And if they need such a center, then maybe you need to assess what kind of services do they want in order for us to study the project and our ability to deliver it successfully. Continuing with the study, market evaluation. This is usually huge. And assuming, huge assuming you are launching a new product in the market. So we'll have to assess the market. And usually that would mean assessing two sides of the same coin, maybe, the demand and supply. Um, is there a demand for the product? How about the supply in competition? Now, often, this is the biggest uncertainty here, and that's often what could cause project to fail, is market evaluation that are not done properly or done quickly or done with lack of experience of the team uh, or maybe biasing the outcome through either coming up with a lot of assumption that could be negative in order to kill a project or maybe being overly optimistic in order to ensure the project go ahead. You need to have a balanced view here. You need to really assess the market openly and without a bias. Next, technology. Again, uh, we see people sometime when they work on, on this methodology, if they start to tell me here that we need Microsoft Office or we need PowerPoint. That's not the intention. This is only about if the project is going to use some kind of technology that hasn't been tested or still in the experimental stages. Why do we want to do know that? Because if we are using standard off-the-shelf technology that has been proven, no big deal. However, if we are using some new technology that's still being tested, that could mean their potential bugs is higher than normal, and we might have to go through a learning curve, and uh, potentially there will be some issues that will have to be resolved more than usual. So how do we answer this usually? Maybe use an alternative technology or uh, include some additional contingency allowances in your project estimate to cover for this potential uh, threat to the project objective. Another factor to consider is location. Does the project where you work or the product location is a factor? 
in many situations, this is uh, for internal project may not be any issues or concern here. However, if you are releasing product into a market or you're going to work into a certain geographic geographical area, then these things could have significant impact on a project visibility. So they have to be considered carefully as well. How about legal regulation? Is there any things, laws, um, import, export, uh, labor laws, health laws, uh, safety laws that might impact the project? You need to understand what they are. At least now what we are saying, we don't have to get into too much detail, but at least you need to understand that yeah, there are certain things which mean you need to have some, some people with experience in those areas on your team to be able to help you uh, recover or, or work those areas. Would the project require any sustainability consideration? Today, uh, we have mentioned uh, GPM Global and sustainability as something very important in our approach and as part of the third dimension, but definitely we should be considering sustainability. Now, some project might not have any major sustainability issues. Some project might have significant sustainability concern and they need to be addressed. Then we go to estimating. And if you remember in one of the slides in earlier modules or earlier level, we showed you the class one, class two, class three estimate. The class one estimate is a term we use for the first estimate on a project that we do during the feasibility study. And what we're looking for here is the rough idea. And the emphasis here on the word rough idea is how much would the project cost and how much it will take to complete. Now, usually, it depends on the nature of the type of the project. Like, for example, in capital project, the estimate at this time could vary plus or minus 50% or even a higher range because there is so much uncertainty at this point in time it's um, almost impossible to come up with a very accurate estimate within a reasonable range like five or ten percent plus or minus now some might say this is a huge range of course but it's considered acceptable and that's why we we instead of looking at a single number we look at the range which we will use in the financial consideration that we will touch on shortly. What are the major project risks? And here we're not looking for to do a detailed risk assessment, but at least take a quick look at the project. What are the major risks that you can foresee at this time? They need to be addressed. And if they are more than we can handle, that's another indicator that the project maybe should be stopped. And if they could be managed or mitigated or dealt with, then we can probably still consider the project as a go. Are there any project you need consideration? This is what I mentioned earlier. We cannot think of everything. Maybe you work on a very unique project that requires things that we have not addressed. You need to address them. And finally, the financial consideration. And usually here, we look at two things. One is how are you going to fund the project? Are you going to go get funding from outside, uh, like equity or crowdfunding? Or maybe are you going to go get loans from the bank or maybe from your own internal budget or maybe getting a partner? So the question here about funding the project, where are we going to get the necessary fund to deliver this project? And number two, if the project is a financial project, financial return project, then we need to do the financial calculation such as the break even point and return on investment and all of these other factor to determine if the project is profitable or not. So we can help the management understand the situation and make it gate two, which is where we are right now. So based on the feasibility study and the business alignment outcome, uh, should we proceed or not? That is the stage gate two. Now this gate is unique a little bit because it has two things in it. First, is the project feasible? And of course, if not, then maybe we should stop. Not maybe, we should stop. And if it's a yes, do we go ahead? And many people say yes, we go ahead. However, not yet. Just hold on and be careful with that because organizations should subscribe to portfolio management where there could be many projects that are feasible, but you only have budget for a few. So the project will have to go through prioritization process 
in order to select the highest priority project. And usually that could be done with this gate or shortly thereafter. In conclusion, if management want to proceed with a the project, then they need to authorize it. And this is often done by the project sponsor who would issue a project authorization document. And the sponsor is uh, what some people call project owner or the end user representative, but we will be using sponsor here. Thank you. Wish you success today and always. Until the next mission.